five, four, three, two, one, zero. All engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hello and welcome, everyone, to Truth of Beer and Pot Sequences. Yay, Yay indeed, Julia. <laughs> This is a podcast where Julie and I listen to all the Cincinnati-based craft beer media and podcasts from the previous week. We get together at a podcast host, and today we are back at Higher Gravity Summit Park. Thank you, Higher Gravity, for being a gracious podcast host. Now, hopefully there aren't uh, too many consequences from the hosts of the other craft beer media and podcasts. Uh, and so far, so good. We're doing all right. Doing okay. Yeah, we were kind of worried there for a few episodes that... There may be some consequences for some of the liberties we were taking with uh, our take on, on their shows, but so far, so good. So far, so good. So far, so good. So, uh, that being said, my name is Marco. I'm a taproom manager here locally, and I brewed beer for several years. That other voice you heard, I did tell you her name, but I did not give her the proper introduction that she deserves, and she is the best co-host in Podcastlandia. As Marco has said, I am Julia. I like to drink all of the craft beer in Cincinnati, craft beer, craft beverages, all kinds of good stuff. And you know what I need, Marco? What's that? I need a miracle wrapped in rice paper. A miracle, a miracle wrapped in <laughs> rice paper. <laughs> Something that somebody was doing with a horse and I don't know. Anyway, it, it's weird. Apparently in this area, in the Cincinnati area, there aren't many miracles happening. No, there's not. not a lot. No, no. <laughs> uh, go figure. Let's go figure. Yep. The thoughts and opinions on this podcast are ours are in ours alone. They do not reflect any entity which we may be affiliated with, such as uh, full time jobs, part time jobs, higher gravity, uh, dicks, potato chips. Uh, <laughs> anyways, <laughs> eat a bag of dicks. We love dicks. Potato chips. Seriously. And uh, yeah. And uh, so if you want to get at us, we'll tell you at the end of the pod how to find us. Uh, thank you, everyone, for making us the number one craft beer podcast that talks about Cincinnati craft beer podcast. We truly appreciate your listenership. Uh, something that I'm going to talk about uh, from now for the next few weeks, please go um, and just take note of the cool event that's happening around Cincy Beer Week or all of the cool events happening around Cincy Beer Week. Julia is going to be part of a really cool uh, panel discussion at Woodburn Brewing. Mm -hmm. uh, and so please, you know, um, put that in your calendars. And if you are a lady in and around craft beer uh, that wants to be part of that panel, please email us. Email Julia at uh, truthbeerpod at gmail.com to be part of that discussion and, and to be part of Cincy Beer Week. And continue to check the website, cincybeerweek.com. Sign up for the newsletter. That way you get all the information about Cincy Beer Week. And if you are a bar, bottle shop, brewery, someone that celebrates craft beer, local beer, and you want to be involved, if you want a poster for when posters are available, reach out to uh, via the contact information on cincybeerweek.com. If you would like to host an event for Cincy Beer Week and you don't know what kind of event to host, the Gnarly Gnome has plenty of ideas, and he is more than happy to help uh, get th give those ideas to you so that you can be part of this absolutely exceptional week-long event that is actually more than a week. Right. Yeah. Which is like happy hour. It's going to be great. I love that. It's, it's going to be great, yeah. Happy hour is longer than an hour. Cincy Beer Week Cincy is more than a week. That's right. It's the way it should be. So Cincy Beer Week went away for several years, and there were, you know, a lot of there was a lot of chatter from people in the beer community about how they liked it, what they didn't like about it, and things like that. One, one way to make sure that it never comes back is to not participate. Mm -hmm. So let's make sure that we all get together as a community and participate in Cincy Beer Week and uh, make this year a great year and next year even better. Absolutely. It cannot be run by one man alone. So if there's anything you can do to help, just, just offer your support, offer your help. Right now, promoting it and trying to get other places to to just sign up and to sign on for for events and to spread the word. That's what we need. Yep. Yeah. So uh, no craft beer podcast would be a good craft beer podcast if you weren't having a beverage of some sort. And we're not like those fake ass podcasts that don't have beverages. That's uh, true. Julia. Marco. What jajunkin? I don't remember what it's called. Catalina, not wine mixer. Hot mixer, I believe. I was so close. Catalina Hot Mixer from BC's Brewing Company. This is the first time that uh, I've seen BC's beer on tap somewhere other than BC's, and I freaking love that. But yeah, that's what's in my glass, and it is very tasty. It's a wonderful West Coast IPA. So it's in my glass. That's the same thing? Same thing. Excellent. Yeah. Great minds think alike. Yeah. 
Awesome. That's a great beer. Uh, we only have two shows to talk about today. Which, Which is, is actually kind of good it's because good. it's Kolsch night. Kolsch night. So we need to make sure that we are as succinct as humanly possible in the recaps for this so that we can make it down to Northern Row and Kolsch. have, who knows, maybe octopus, maybe pretzels, maybe. It's also about the parking. Chip. Like the if we get yes. there, hopefully we get there early enough to where we can park in the lot. And right not have to pay for it. And not have to pay for it. Yeah. <laughs> I will gladly pay for parking, but uh, if I don't have to. All right, the two shows that we have to talk about before we just kind of let this go completely off of the rails before we even get started. We have an episode of Barstool Perspectives. Yes. And we have an episode of The Weekly Pint. TWP. Yeah, you know me and Marco and Mm -hmm. Gnome. Yep. You know us three. How about that? I don't know. I have a question. Okay. Wasn't Hop Juju supposed to be year-round now? I I thought it was still seasonal. I could be wrong. I thought it was supposed to be year-round now. Oh, man, I don't know. Where, where hell is it? I don't know. Check the Fathead's website. Check the website. Just check. Did you check the website? Check the website. Did you check the website? Not yet. See? You got to check the website. I don't want to hear you complaining if you haven't checked the website. Check the website. All right. Let's go ahead and start with Barstool Perspectives from August the 16th, 2024. The All Canada episode is what I'm calling this one. Yay. It was not. All Canada, if it, eh? if it was live, I missed the live because it was super late. Don't think it was live. And I'll tell you what, Brett has never looked better. <laughs> I mean, freaking gorgeous. <laughs> yes. The hair, the yeah. outfit, top to bottom. I yeah. mean, I, I, I think that, that that's a good new look for the show. For sure. Absolutely. They had a guest. Well, Mike had a guest. We will let you watch to see why Brett was not there. Congratulations, Brett, and your family. That's all I'm going to say because it's not it's not my story to share. Right. Congratulations. But in place of Brett, Lindsay Bonadonna was on. Yep. Which is fantastic. If you don't know that name, um, I mean, I don't want to say maybe you should, but she is a craft beer maven. She has maven. been yep. a, a very big part of Cincinnati craft beer from when Cincinnati craft beer was in its very early stages. She has her own chapter in the Tanked in Cincinnati book Mm -hmm. that was, I'll say transcribed by Brett and Mike of the conversations they had with a lot of people in beer. Yep. Um, And I'll just just say Rivertown. Yeah. So if you, if the name isn't familiar, because again, if you're just getting into craft beer, if you don't know a lot about the history yet, A, listen to all of the Bruce Guys uh, Happy Hour podcast episodes. Yes. Get the Tanked in Cincinnati book. Watch Barstool Perspectives on YouTube. And learn who Lindsay is and, I mean, fall in love with her because of how beyond positive she is about every single aspect of every single news event that Michael D. Morgan tried to throw at her. Yeah. Yeah. That was, uh, really, that was, that was really fun, actually. Oh, it was great. Yeah. It was great. The, the dynamic was fantastic. Uh, she is the owner of a kind of wellness, smoothie, whole foods, natural foods, uh, little cafe in, I think that's considered Wyoming, uh, that used to be the Half Day Cafe, if, if you were familiar with Half Day Cafe when that was a thing, ripped to one of the best breakfasts that I've ever had. So support her that way, because she's not in beer currently, but that's okay. She's doing other really, really awesome things. Uh, let's see. What what do we want to start with? There was no schooner. There was Mike, not a schooner. Mike did not have a schooner. I was a little beside myself. I couldn't focus. I had to restart the episode like three different times because I'm going. Yeah. Mike's glasses. I are thought they tiny. were going to have so matching tiny. schooners. I know. But instead, they actually discussed how one of the glasses was supposed to be a matching glass. Yes, and, and it, it didn't happen. There was a failure to communicate. Launch, communicate. Well, yes. Yeah. I don't know. All the above. Yeah. All the above. But it's fine. They still got a decent number of sips in for, for the show. Uh, beer, apparently, is not healthy. I disagree. Eh, you know, it's made from hops, which are plants, so therefore I'm drinking a salad, right? Or a yeah. smoothie. I mean, what's, what's, what's not healthy about it? There's evidence, uh, at least a uh, headline I saw, said there's evidence of the ancient Egyptians having antibiotic properties uh, when they actually were analyzing them, and they believed that it came from the uh, the uh, the beer, that not they the were honey, because I know that honey has a lot of no the of beer. Of, okay, all no, right, it that's has to fair. Be the beer. They did bring up a good point when they were talking about this. They were like, you know, the studies say, well, who's doing the studies? Who's funding them? Yeah, because they're going to put their bias on whichever way they they want it to go. And something that they didn't question, but I did. 
who is being studied. If you're going out and just doing a handful of random people aged, just say 21 to 40, and in that you have a mix of people that really don't drink, a mix of people that drink maybe one drink a day or one drink a week, all the way up to people that are drinking, you know, a six pack three times a day. I don't know. Like, you know what I mean? Like everything from the, the bare minimum social drinker to someone with a problem, you're going to get potentially different results. But if the only people you're studying are the super, super, super heavy drinkers, like the problematic drinkers, well, yeah, you're going to get a lot of reports of their health being in the tank. Or if you do a survey or you do a study of people that have <laughs> one drink a night, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be completely different. So, well, so what about the doofus th- ones that they used to have, like when they said that uh, alcohol kills brain cells, and it was because they were taking alcohol and just dumping it on yeah, brain right, cells? Yeah, right, exa- right, exactly. Like, well, that's so amazing. Who's doing the study? <laughs> How are they doing the study? And what kind of people are they studying? I feel like it is such a... You can't just say studies say, no, there, there are too many... <laughs> Too many other factors that you have to consider when looking at some of these, some of these things. I feel like I mean if a you're lot of trying I mean, to fight, uh, you know, trying to fight infectious diseases. What if you just you know injected bleach? You know, it's again, <laughs> you're not necessarily wrong, but it's going to cause a whole slew of other problems. It's a whole bunch of other problems. I mean, you're gonna, <laughs> you're literally going to kill off <laughs> one thing, but guess what? <laughs> It's not gonna, <laughs> not no, gonna work. No. Not gonna oh, work. good God! Yeah, it's it's studies are important, research is important, but some of these are biased, and so you have to take some of them with a grain of salt. I don't know. That's all I'm saying about that. Uh, let's see. The most profitable part of Tilray, you know, the weed dealers from Canada, is beer. Can't be. Are you sure about that? Can't be. Why not? Because it wasn't profitable for the company that owned them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, no, no. Brand, the brands that they bought were not big names in craft beer. Some so of them, some of them were sort of nationally known names. Right, they were but known, they, but they weren't. They weren't hype beer. You know what I mean? Like they weren't doing weren't, great. No, but what does that mean for their THC and CBD products? Like, if if those brands that are just kind of mediocre brands at best is fueling their profitability. Does that mean that weed sales, beverage, you know, whatever else they're doing with, like on the marijuana side of the spectrum, is it completely tanking for them? Is it? You as know what I mean? Like I don't. I mean, I know they mentioned it, but is it as obvious as the the obvious play, which is that they want to start manufacturing on a a really big scale? Sure. Sure. Uh, and you know, and these, manufacturing like CBD and THC products because right. that's what they're. That's what their focus is before they started can't buying be, these craft breweries. You're right. It's, it yeah. can't be the most obvious answer, right? Sometimes the most obvious answer is the right one. I don't know. Not seeing the force. For Seems the like a super risky play. I, you could do it so I much feel, smaller, right? With less risk, right? Until you know, because there have already been, and again, back to like the studies and being careful where those are coming from, but there has already been data and sales data showing that yes, there was a spike in the in the sales of THC and CBD and other hemp-based products when they came out. But now all that's starting to kind of level out a bit and it's not skyrocketing or having this enormous uptick like seltzers did when they first started to become popular and, and, and you know, other non, non-beer non beverages. Does it just mean that more people are waiting until it's more federally legal or is it just not going to be as big of a seller because again you'll have one maybe two while you're you know what i mean like it's not like a beer or another alcoholic beverage that you're going to have more than one glass while you're out i don't know you're going to have one i don't and and i I don't i I don't don't really know i no i don't i find it really hard to believe that the most obvious answer is the answer in this case sure yeah yeah but I, I, th- I think you're right, though. I think that that's what they're looking to do, or they at least want that ability. They at, le- at least want to be able to say, hey, we're noticing that the trends are really going towards these hemp beverages. Now we have all kinds of production facilities that we can make billions and billions and billions of, billions. of gallons of this stuff. I don't know. 
It seems weird, but hey, you know what? Strange. I don't I don't own a business, and maybe that's why. I can't see things the way that they do. Did we get to the fuck Kroger part yet? Not yet. How how many more notes do we have till we get to the fuck uh, Kroger part? Three more notes. Okay. Three more notes. Uh, they... Their words, not ours. Their words, not ours, exactly. Uh... They talked about going to Canada as like a fan trip. Oh yeah, yeah. Because Lindsay has been to Canada a bazillion times. Mike's been to Canada a whole bunch of times. Yeah, went to the so, uh, the Canadian uh, ballet. Exactly, exactly. So they talked about where to go, what to do, what to see, what to smoke, what to drink. So if you want some help planning your trip to Canada land, this episode is the episode for you. Yep. Yeah. For I mean, sure. who knew that they were doing a travel show? They do all kinds of things. Investment advice, health advice, legal advice, and beer, now travel advice. Travel. Oh, yeah, they do beer, too. Oh. Huh, forgot about that. So, RIP Anthony Bourdain. Someone's got to do some of this Someone, for us. absolutely, absolutely. Uh, distilling milk. It's very odd. If, if, uh, if they could show that, they're, that they distill the lactose out of a vodka made from milk, Marco, would you try it? Sure. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. At what at, at some point, I feel like no matter what you're distilling something out of, it's just going to be alcohol. alcohol. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, that, it's very interesting. And if they can make something an actual usable product instead of just a bunch of waste byproduct, why not? Yeah, why not? I try it. I do love that they're calling it vodka. It is the. Well, how it is call the most. I know. Else? I, I mean, know. That's, that's, it is. It's the. In most, this instance, the most obvious answer is the is, correct. Is the answer. correct one. It's a terrible, terrible pun, but that's why I love it so much. Yeah. I absolutely Has love to be. it. Uh, 7-Elevens in Canada are getting liquor licenses, because what could be a better idea than going into a 7-Eleven, sitting down at a bar, and just getting shit faced? The the snippet or the quote from the person in charge of 7-Eleven in Canada was hilarious. Mm. That was yes. hilarious. You're going to have yes. to go and watch. I'm not going to spoil it's that for you. It's 27 minutes long. You you absolutely That can watch is hilarious. It's, it was great. I just... I watched I this. Did. I watched this twice, and I laughed hard <laughs> both times. Both times, yeah. because yeah. I, I'm like this guy or this person. This, mm. You that you just made that shit up. Oh my god! I don't. You, yeah, could be completely off base here, but a lot of these uh, the the outposts and these these places that are remote sort of have to be a lot of things to a lot of people. Sure, it makes a lot of sense to but, be able to offer uh, a place for someone to sit and unwind and have a beer after maybe a long road trip or, you know, something of the nature. I don't know what constitutes a local in some of these areas, but local could, for some of them could be like a hundred miles away. Exactly. Like nothing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So if you got to drive a hundred miles to get a, get a beer and a shot at a Seven Eleven, sure. then damn it, you earned that damn beer and shot. I, I agree 100%. Uh, I had one other note on this episode, and I bet you can guess what it is. Fuck Kroger. Fuck Kroger. Surge pricing. They're looking at goddamn surge pricing. That is... For your food. For, for things you need to survive. Yeah. That, like, that, is, that is a... I don't care if it's ice cream that you don't need to survive. That's bullshit. That is preying upon people that... Should not. Be, no one should be preyed on when it comes to food. I don't Look, care. I, but just. I totally respect uh, the fact that that Kroger's a retailer. I totally respect that sure. the fact that they have to make a profit to do what they do and to provide the 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 services that they have uh, out there. Right. I mean, we. Yes. But this is a um, a basic human, human staple. Yes. Something that people need. Yes. Now, do you need Doritos? Some people would argue yes. Uh, Right. But, I mean, if we're talking about surge pricing on things that are, are basic needs, right. uh, you know, right. it's not surge pricing on Oreos, but surge pricing on, you know, ground beef and, you know, raw chicken and, you know, the, 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 the greens and right. the, the vegetables, right. the fruits, simple milks and cheeses and all this stuff. You're talking about raising, you know, uh, mm -hmm. uh, surge pricing on all those things. Prices are already too damn high for a lot of this stuff. Some people already can't Which afford, you know. Mike is basically accusing uh, that organization of keeping the prices inflated. Oh, yeah. yeah. When it's not. Um, when there's no reason for it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Like the, the, the margin now has become so vast that they don't want to give the margins away. 
I, but I, I mean, know. to this Mike's point, I mean, shopping other places, you could. If you're able to, yeah. If you're able to. Do it. Some I, people can. I just yeah. find it, I, I just find <laughs> things out there, there, there are um, many different factors to where it seems like there's not any real choice. Right. Sure. You know, you could you could go to the W place, which I don't like shopping there right. for a lot of a lot of reasons. Sure. Um, some of them environmental. Some of them have to do with the way that the workforce has been treated. Some of the way that the workforce, specifically women and advancements, have been treated. Other mm -hmm. things are the way that you know they have uh, grown and destroyed small business in, in small towns. Mm -hmm. I mean, okay, but that eliminates another alternative. Right. Well, what's the right. alternative to that? They're also a big, a big right. chain. Well, the, then what's the alternative to that? It's well, not, and then it's if you go pleasant. somewhere else, you have to add in the additional cost of that additional transportation to these places that may be farther away from a Kroger or, you know, whatever your alternatives are. Yeah. You, might, you might have to take public transportation to get to and from a grocery store. And the easiest way for you to do that is to go to a Kroger or a Walmart or whatever. You know what I mean? And some people don't have options or the options like they don't make financial sense time sense whatever so they're doing what the best that they can but kroger sure as shit isn't doing the best that they can to try to help people in the community nah. Nah, i don't know we could go off on this on on a very long time well i think we spent a half hour talking about a half hour episode yeah pretty much did i mean there were a few minutes of intros but yeah uh do you want the sip count or a multiple choice question first oh a sip count Sip count? Sip All count. right. Absolutely. All right. Let's start with Lindsay. Yes, Lindsay. Lindsay took 13 sips. Okay. That is fantastic. And this Good again, 27-minute episode. Mike took 17 sips. Okay, very so good. So they were kind of Well, they were cheering back pace. and forth quite a bit. Absolutely, and they were like, absolutely. You know, oh, good point, sir. Good point, ma'am. Uh, <laughs> cheerio. Yeah, exactly. I'm surprised Mike didn't have his monocle on, to be honest with you. Oh, yeah. Well, that's fine. And the top hat. Yes. Like the Monopoly Man. Yes, he did look like the Monopoly Man in that one uh, thumbnail. Yeah, from from way back oh, yonder. I remember that. You remember exactly, yep, I exactly. Sure do. That's a total of thirty countables, sixty ounces. So in just shy of thirty minutes, three point seven five pints. That's doable. So that is doable. Good job. That's a uh, a little less than when Brett's there. Yeah. It's still a very respectable. I mean, that's what a little more than a pint every ten minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Good job to you guys. Uh, did you need to take a break, or do you want to just roll into the weekly, let's do it, point? Weekly point. The weekly Cheers. point. Cheers. I think we should probably just roll into it. All right, let's do this. This is actually going to be a quicker recap because a huge chunk of the ep or a majority of the, of the episode was all about one singular thing, and there's only so much we can say about it without just giving you a minute-by-minute play-by-play of the episode, and then you won't listen to it or watch it. And we want you to listen to and watch it because you can see Gnome's still face for the first, like, 10 minutes. Yeah. Before he finally looked at the chat and went, oh, they're telling me that there's a problem. Yeah. Because, again, it's not the weekly pint without a little sprinkling of chaos. Yeah. yeah. So did he actually do that on purpose? That is a good question. That's a good question. This is episode 225. This battle might be useless, but it's going to happen anyway. It is another Oktoberfest quest showdown. Uh, he explained his Oktoberfest quest uh, again because some, this might be the first time some people are hearing about it. It might be their first time on the Weekly Pint. So he went over his bracket, how things are, are judged, how he picks the winner for each pairing of Oktoberfest beer. And he made sure to say... If your Oktoberfest is hazy, instantly in the loser's pile. Yeah. It does not get any farther. It does not pass go. It does not collect $200. And it will not have the opportunity to come back and be redeemed. That's right. If he has a, a comeback bracket. He actually has the phrase. He goes, you are the weakest link. And Goodbye. Goes, yep. Goodbye. Yep. And then he just chucks the can into yeah, the wall. And uh, yeah. Yeah. And he's had more than one hazy Oktoberfest this year of course yeah of course yeah that's the thing it's a problem uh there is a mystery bracket this year which kind of isn't a mystery anymore because he explained exactly what it is yeah the invasive species bracket yeah which i, I do kind of love the idea because there are some decent invasive species beers in cincinnati do they need to be a part of the cincinnati oktoberfest bracket only the best one deserves consideration I would agree with that. I'd agree with that. So he paired Highwire versus West Sixth. Yeah. 
and they both looked beautiful in the glass. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And one, as he as he did his well, Simpsons only one myth, can win. Can win. There can be only one. There can there absolutely can only be one. But there was a very clear winner once he really got once he dug into the beers that he had in his glasses. Yep. Yep. Uh, we're not going to tell you what it is again. This is something that you can. Sorry, not sorry. No, not sorry at all about it. Uh, he did cuvee them at the end because that is a new part of this Oktoberfest quest is when he tries two beers together, or, you know, the the, the pairings, he will cuvee them. Got it. And Got try it. to make an even better version yep. of what he just drank. That's right. So find out if it was actually better or if the loser of these two just overpowered the, the goodness, the brightness of the winner. Yep. Yeah. Uh, let's see. He said that he had a couple of upcoming beer projects that he was going to talk about, but the only one he actually really dug into is Mellotone Beer Project. Yes. That is a uh, going to be a new brewery very, very soon, surprisingly soon, from what they're putting out in social media. I think it's surprisingly soon, given the time frame of the, um, the press release. Yeah. But... It sounds like this has been a project being, that's been worked on for several years. Well, but I, for the build out of the space that they're moving into, like I know that the space is already set up to have a brewery in it, so that part's fine. But it sounds like they're completely revamp- revamping all three levels of the space they're going to be in, and they're they're aiming for like a late September, early November launch. Jesus. That's like a month and a half. That's like okay. We'll just we'll yeah. just we'll just say two months. They posted a picture on um, I think it was Instagram. It was just kind of like a 360 of all the scaffolding on the inside of the building, and that that could have been taken weeks ago. I have no idea. Don't know when they actually bought the building. I'm sure we can look that up in public record. But you know that's more research than I'm going to do on any given Monday Not night. Not going to do it. But I think that it's – I'm excited for it. It is a project that is uh, between uh, one of the guys from Rheingeist and another gentleman from Three Weavers Brewing, mm-hmm. which is out in California. Three they know Weavers. How, they know how to party. Yeah. Uh, excited to see what happens there. That could be really cool. Hopefully everything goes smoothly for them. But just remember there is an ish. To the end of any brewery opening. Well, speaking about that, Julia, mm-hmm. well, I think that we'd be doing a disservice if we didn't talk about one brewery opening and another brewery changing. And it wasn't in the weekly yes, pint, yes. but the gnome does have a direct correlation um, in a business sense. Mm-hmm. Um, there was news breaking today yes. uh, that Dogberry put out a post, a, a, an announcement mm-hmm. that they are going to move on to the next phase of whatever Dogberry is going to be. Right. Now, they did not, uh, they, they really don't have any detail yet on, does that mean they're going to try to find someone to buy it? Does that mean that they're just going to close the doors? That's, it sounds like still to be determined, but if you have ever been to Dogberry, if you have ever had any of their, their beers, if you've ever enjoyed anything about them, if you've never been up there before, you need to do it. You need to yeah. get up there, have a couple pints, and even though this potentially, again, we don't have a lot of details, it didn't feel like this was a, hey, you know, we're not making sales, we're going to have to close the doors kind of post. Just just get up there, support them for as long as they are still able to be supported. Yeah. You know? So that's... Uh like I said, that wasn't in the weekly pint, but the gnome has a direct correlation. They um, posted that today. So, yeah, and that was a, yep. yep from today. So, uh, are we? I had two other notes, and then multiple choice and sip count. Because again, okay. like the the majority of this episode was both him trying the two Oktoberfest beers, picking his winner, making the cuvee, talking about the bracket, talking about the cuvees, talking about this new second bracket. Uh, there was a call in where there was a pumpkin beer tangent. That went on for for quite a while, so mm-hmm. that was a big chunk. But I mean, again, if we talk about all of that, we're just going to be giving you a minute by minute recap, which then that doesn't encourage you to go listen, which is what we want you to do. Yeah, go I listen. Sti- I still say pumpkin beers can and should be drank in August because you can get a very light pumpkin ale. You don't have to have to be drinking these dark pumpkin porters and stouts yet. Just my opinion. Yeah. You can say I'm wrong, but... Uh, I'm not going to no. say that. <laughs> you can do whatever the hell you I'm want. I'm saying that the global you, gnome, you can say I'm wrong, but 
those who those who know, they know I'm right. They know. <laughs> <laughs> they know. Uh, and then the last note that uh, I had was Gnome discussed the trials and tribulations of rationing Oktoberfest beers at the Gnome household. Makes perfect sense. Yeah. Like, oh, hey, can I have a beer? Yes, but not any of these 37 cases of Oktoberfest that are lining every inch of the house right now. At first glance, like, let's say you took a look at all of the Oktoberfest he currently has at his house. Mm-hmm. And Which his, isn't all of them, but yeah, yeah. And his wife says, hey, I'll join you. I have an Oktoberfest beer. Well, there's a there's a, there's an issue. We have we have stumbled upon a, a a situation. Yes. And he goes into explaining the actual the <laughs> the, the the format and the reason why just a simple hey I'll join you uh, turns into a a little bit of a conundrum. True. So very true. Go and watch and find out why uh, a simple. Uh, a simple gesture of uh, Mrs. Gnome wanting to uh, share an experience with Gnome becomes a little more complicated than it seems on the surface. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Might cause some contention in the household. I mean, maybe. Maybe. Maybe not. We're not privy to all those dynamics, but no. uh, yeah. Uh, so I'll do the sip count, and then I completely forgot the multiple choice question for Bruce Guys or Barstool Perspective, because I don't know what I'm doing yet. One of these days, I'll figure this out. No. So we'll do Let's both not. of the multiple choice questions okay. at the very end, okay. which is pretty much in just a few minutes, because okay. that's all we got. Let's go. All right. Sip count. I didn't write down the total running time for this episode, but it was it was under an hour, slightly under an hour, I believe. There really? Were, I think so. We hit under an hour, huh? I, th- okay. I think we did, yeah. yeah. I thought it, the conversa- it might have been the 57, I thought the call-in minutes. conversation kicked us over, but that's okay. Again, I could be wrong. It, it does happen from time to time. But there were 11 sniffs, so 11 times at glass to nose to try to figure out what kind of florals and what kind of things he was getting out of it. And then nine actual sips. So that's a very easy 20 total countables. Okay. 40, 40 ounces. ounces. Yep. Two and a half pints. Sounds good. Incredibly doable yeah. during an hour-long show. That's not a show, but it is a show. It just depends on how Gnome's feeling that day. That's right. Yeah. All right, and then to wrap up the total recaps, two multiple-choice questions. One for Barstool Perspectives, because, again, I don't know what I'm doing, and I <sighs> mentioned it when we were doing the recap and then completely forgot about it. What is the Canadian Ballet? Is it A... A mega gas station in Canada, much like Buggies. Is it B, a strip club? Or is it C, a troupe of the best dancers from all of the provinces except for Saskatchewan? Ah, Julia, is it D? <laughs> so good. So good. <laughs> or is it where all the best Canadian hockey players come to uh, a skills tournament challenge I mean what what could be and more showcase their right, skills what could be more graceful than that yeah. absolutely a ballet and then my multiple choice question for the weekly pint what did Gnome blame on Westsiders is it A traffic is it B invasive species or is it C a lack of smoked Oktoberfests Ah, Julia, is a D. Boom. Bringing it. Like, that was quick succession, too, man. I'm telling I you. I know. I had to rebound real quick. <laughs> I'm impressed. <laughs> is it D, Julia? It is a, uh increase in the uh, year-over-year totals for uh, companies that repair driver's side rear-view mirrors. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that, and you are not wrong. With that being said, that's all that we had for this week. Uh, To the Patreon subscribers, I don't know that there's going to be a lot that's edited out of this, so you might only have a minute or two of extra content, but you will still get a little bit extra, and you're going to be getting this episode early, so hopefully that makes up. Plus, hell, I think last week's episode, you got almost 40 minutes of extra content, too. So what we can do real quick is I could, uh, for Patreon listeners only, I could do a, um, a short version of the Gettysburg Address, in um, <laughs> Charles Barkley voice. So let's do that in just a minute. All right. Sounds good. Okay. Sounds good. If you're not a Patreon subscriber, the show is over. And with that being said, thank you so much for all of your support, your listenership. If you like what we did, 
all we ask really is to do the things that you normally do when you enjoy a podcast. Uh, like, review, subscribe, share, tell everyone, shout it from the rooftops. If you want, go to our website, truthbeerpod.com. Links to absolutely everything, our social media, our email address. Uh, link to, to buy Dick's Potato Chips because nice. they're fantastic. Yep, I put that up on the top of the website. Oh, yeah. And uh, also links to become uh, to, to either give a one-time donation like our amazing friend Matthew from Line and Tap. That's right. Thank, Thank you, you again, Matthew. again, and again. Oh, I'm sorry, Matt. We're Matt, friends. Matt, well, yeah. I haven't met him yet, so he's still Matthew to me. Okay. One of these days, maybe he'll show up here and... Uh, and he'll be met. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, to become a Patreon subscriber where you get these episodes not only a day early, but also you get unedited episodes. The only things I cut are the dead air spaces for when we get other beers, make bathroom breaks, that type of thing. But all of the awkward pauses, all of the, okay, wait a second, should I have said that? The bad jokes that are so bad that I cut them from public listenership, you get it all it's a hell of a lot of fun. That link is also at truthbeerpod.com. With that being said, Marco. Julia. What are you going to be doing next week? Uh, I think I'm going to do this here with you. Cheers. Sounds good. Cheers. Cheers.